Hey, Cade. Hi. We are doing another international series. Ooh. This one is about food. You know, I am kind of famished, so I mean, let, let's get into this. Oh, well, you know what? I did some careful research and I found a traditional Colorado dish. Ooh. What is it? Chicken, burger, french well, fries? Well, it's, it's Rocky Mountain oysters. Well, I'm not very into seafood, but I Oh, mean. well, it's it's not actually seafood. It's um well, bull balls. The organs are often deep fried after they've been skinned, coated in flour, pepper and salt, and sometimes they even pound them flat. <coughs> you don't really seem super excited about the Rocky Mountain oysters. Oh, no. Well, maybe you would be more excited to hear about other dishes from other people around Ooh. the world. Well, hopefully they are not testicles. Oh, uh, yeah, they, well, hopefully not. So, let's go to our friends and see what they have to talk about. Transition! Blah, blah, blah. Hey guys, I'm Russ from North Carolina, and I'm here to talk about some good old southern food. Food we uh, grew up on around here, definitely some good old french fried taters. Mm -hmm. Okay, bad sling blade impression put aside. One of, the, one of the dishes here in the south that I enjoy fixing is fried chicken. But the way I do it is I just take chicken strips. I bread them in flour, and I dip them in uh, beat-up eggs in a cup with hot sauce and a touch of milk. I just let them sit in that, roll them in the flour, dip them back in that, back in the flour one more time, and fry that up. And that's definitely a signature dish down here in the south. Another signature dish is uh, fried potatoes, pinto beans, turnip greens. I mean, that's a meal in itself down here in the South. You can't beat that. Another one that comes to mind is fried pork chops mm. with some good old fried okra. You notice there's a lot of fried involved. And yes, I said okra. That's what we call it here in the South. Get that okra junk out of here, dude. Ain't no proper speaking here. And don't be coming around here with no potatoes or tomatoes either, man. It's maters and taters where I'm from. Bueno, si, hasta el mundo. I mean, uh, greetings, everyone. <laughs> um, I'm making this video because I was asked by the wonderful Life with Two YouTubers to uh, share a little bit about the culinary uh, experience that I have with uh, my heritage. Uh, my parents are Cuban, uh, full-blooded Cuban. They came here in the 1960s. I was born here in the United States, though. And one of my favorite dishes that my mom made growing up is arroz con pollo a la chorrea. So arroz con pollo, chicken with rice, translation. Obviously, probably most everybody knows that, though. Uh, it's Latin dish. It's actually, almost all Latin American countries have some version of this. Uh, Colombia has a real good version. Puerto Rico, Spain, um, all over Central America and the Caribbean. But... Uh, I can only tell you the way that my mother made it, which is a la chorrea, which means you make it uh, so that it is actually mushy, right? So it's like liquidy almost. And uh, I'm just going to go real quickly how I made it, and then that's it, right? Um, I, it came out really good, by the way. Lots of spices, uh, pepper, uh, cumin, laurel leaf, a little bit of salt. Um, you use a chicken broth which you make from bullion and you ground uh, you, you ground up uh, green pepper a little bit of red pepper a whole garlic clove uh, some uh, a small tomato uh, did I say onion already a whole onion yeah a whole onion and uh, you saute that and to until uh, it's until um, it's cooked up a bit 
put a little bit of, of organic tomato paste. Yeah, I use, I use organic ingredients here, except for the rice. That was um, pretty much store-bought stuff. And, um, and you cook the chicken previously, uh, like in a frying pan with a little bit of olive oil and uh, a spice packet uh, called Sassong Accent. And it has various spices in there, uh, paprika, things like that. And then after everything is, you put everything together and you put the chicken broth and the rice and it, the, 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 uh, the rice absorbs the chicken broth liquid. Then when it's almost, you know, ready to go, you pour in a cheap can of beer, believe it or not. And uh, you let that cook in until it uh, gets to this consistency. Uh, of course, you, you know, season and you taste as you go along to make sure that it is scrumptious. And I must admit, and my mother makes the best of this that I've ever tasted, and, and I've had many different versions, but mine is not bad. I'd say it's second or third best that I've ever had. So that, uh, my friends, is arroz con pollo a la chorrea Cuban style. Okay, thanks, and thank you again for uh, including me in this really great project, as always. Bye, everyone. Be blessed and be back. Well, this is how it looks, a roast con pollo, right before the final stage. Let's see how it turns out. Mm. And here is the finished product with uh, pimentos in the middle. A roast con pollo a la chorrea, Cuba style. Hey, 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 this is Zen from Zen World and Today, um, for Life With YouTubers, I am eating Jamaican food, but I am eating vegetarian Jamaican food. So, um, I was born in Jamaica, just to give you a little bit of rundown. I was born in Jamaica, came here when I was about two years old, and I've been living in the United States for a while. Um, and traditionally, um, there's a lot that goes into Jamaican food, and currently right now, for health reasons, I am a vegetarian so it, it was a little bit hard for me to get um certain foods because in jamaica we eat um things like um oxtail uh curry chicken and rice and peas and a whole and dumpling and akian saltfish right and you can hear my accent coming out a little bit so we eat a lot of different things so i did have to order from a vegetarian slash vegan jamaican restaurant so that you could see some of the food so let's look at it right all right, so this is something called Rasta Pasta. Um, it's usually made in a lot of different ways, but this is a vegetarian version. And here we have just a mixed kind of rice. Um, usually, I would get rice and peas, right? And then this, this is not a pastry, but this is kind of, this is something called festival. Usually, predominantly, festival is uh, a sweet kind of dumpling. Um, fried dumpling, but it's usually longer. But this restaurant made made it kind of like a, a ball of sorts, right? Which is pretty good. Good, and we just have some mixed vegetables, right? Now, again, like I was explaining before, predominantly, um, this isn't, uh, I would say, the the food of choice for um, Jamaican um, households, right? You might see um jerk chicken um you might see fish um aki on solid fish rice and peas a whole lot of different things so this is more customized because i uh again i'm vegetarian so yeah i just got um foods that are reminiscent to jamaican foods and it is um from a jamaican vegan vegetarian restaurant but in itself, it isn't the the normal sea, right? But I would definitely say the the rasta pasta and then the the festival is something that you would normally see, right? All right. So you might ask the question, how does everything taste, right? So let's kind of let's taste this festival and let's see. Tastes pretty good. Usually, festival is a little bit sweeter, so this tastes more like a fried dumpling, which is another. Um, Kind of is a food that goes along with Jamaican food. It tastes pretty good. Um, it's not as sweet as I thought. Festival again is usually sweeter. And then let's test this rasta pasta. See how it tastes. Because I remember how the rasta pasta tastes that um, has meat in it. 
I still remember. So let me see. Mmm. This one's good. It's a little spicy. Um, the way it should be. It's pretty delicious. It's really good. Mmm. So what's my favorite Jamaican food or Jamaican dish? I go with my breakfast and like lunch slash dinner, right? So I mentioned earlier, um, prior to me becoming vegetarian, which is only temporary anyway, just for a couple months, it's um I would normally get for the morning time, I would get something called Aki on Sawfish with dumpling. And my favorite dish of all time um, would have to be curry chicken and rice and peas, right? And sometimes I'll swipe it out, swap it out uh, for jerk chicken. So um, overall, Jamaican culture is a very beautiful culture, very lively. Um, yeah, the food is great. Everything is great, right? We, um, we said nothing but good vibes. And we're just like any other culture, right? Beautiful, kind of like a flower that blossoms. There's so many different layers um, to the culture itself. And while I wouldn't, I wasn't able to show you the food, the you know, the food food, right? That we, you would normally have in a Jamaican dish, right? This kind of gives you a little, a little bit of a hint into uh, Jamaican food and Jamaican uh, vibes and culture, right? So, you know. Uh, listen to some of the music, right? It's a Jamaican music, some reggae. Um, and if you're lively and a dancer, you can listen to some dance hall, different things like that. Um, but if I was to recommend any kind of um, a YouTube page where you could see some really good Jamaican food being cooked, then go to Country Boy Kitchen, which is K-U-N-T-R-E-E-B-W-O-Y Kitchen. All right, so it's not B O B O Y, it's Country Boy, Country Boy Kitchen, right? Dialect is Patwa, right? Um, so yeah, go out and check it out. So I hope you enjoyed this little snippet. Um, shout out to Life for Two YouTubers, right? Um, for having some of the Jamaican vibes and the Jamaican um, culture on the channel. And I'll see you all later. Take care. Hey there, Crystal from sunny California. I grew up mostly in a Latin neighborhood where there was always delicious and amazing foods like chaveche, empanadas, quesadillas, menudo, tamales, especially during Christmas time. I guarantee there's always going to be tamales and menudo on the table. But my favorite of all those foods, tacos, tacos, tacos. Love me some tacos. In Mexico, when you, if you tried to order Tacos with the hard shell, they're kind of hard to find because they're traditionally made with the soft shell. And that's definitely my favorite. But yeah, if you come to my house currently, you're guaranteed to find tacos. We eat tacos here probably twice a week, sometimes three times. But yes, love me some tacos. You can do anything with them. Tacos, tacos, tacos. Mm. All right, so... In Australia, there is nothing more Aussie than a meat pie. That's right. Good old Aussie meat pie. Uh, the most traditional way to have it is just, I guess, your plain meat pie um, with some tomato sauce on the top. I believe you guys might call that ketchup. Some people say there's a difference between ketchup and tomato sauce. I don't know the difference. I got myself here a pie. This is a, not just, this is a bit fancy. It's not just a plain meat pie. Plain meat pies are kind of boring. I got myself a uh, pepper steak pie right here. I'm not a huge fan of tomato sauce on pies. The only time I really like to have tomato sauce on pies is on a plain meat pie. A lot of people literally cannot eat a pie without sauce. It's kind of like how people can't eat dim sims without soya sauce, you know? Um, I'm not gonna put tomato sauce on there. I thought I'd, um, my original idea was to actually get uh, a Vegemite pie because they released a thing, Fawn 20 is probably the most Australian brand you can get. It's not a great pie, but it's a, this is a Fawn 20 pie. Fawn 20 is a brand. And they released a limited edition Vegemite pie. Now I didn't realize it was limited because I went to the supermarket before, I couldn't get one. 
Um, but they were amazing. Some people didn't like it, but it's not like an overpowering Vegemite flavor. It was just a hint of Vegemite in there. Um, but I couldn't get a Vegemite pie. So, just to make my buddy Metarog happy, I thought I'd do the next best thing. This is Vegemite. I don't know if you guys were there for um, Rena's birthday video, but I ate a whole lot of Vegemite. Oh. I've been on shows at Chicago. <laughs> <before, laughs> <and we're laughs> <crazy. laughs> oh, he's going in for more. <laughs> what I'm about to do is not very Australian at all. This is not what Aussies do, um, but I figured I'd spice up this video and make it a little bit ridiculous. That is a buttload of Vegemite. You would never eat this much, and this is enough to feed. I don't know, eight slices of toast or more. Um, so what I'm gonna do, just for you, Roger, I'm gonna spread this on the top of this pie because if I can't get, if I couldn't buy a Vegemite pie, I'm just gonna make my own Vegemite pie. Again, this is not something people do. In fact, I do not recommend this at home because I put way too much Vegemite on this. But, you know me, I like to be silly and I like to make you guys I think I'm an idiot. <laughs> oh, by the way, I don't know if you noticed, got a little food themed comic book here. My, my gal Harlequin inside a burger. All right, so check this out. That is a lot of Vegemite on this pie. That is not a normal amount of Vegemite that anyone would put on anything. But you know me, I'm Simple Simon. Let's do this. Yeah, I've had it sitting out for a while, so hopefully it's not gonna burn my face when I bite into this. The Vegemite pie is definitely nicer. Because <laughs> um, this is a lot of Vegemite. Anything Vegemite flavored, people freak out. Because they're like, I don't like Vegemite. Um, it's always just a subtle hint of Vegemite. The weirdest thing I've seen Australia release was they did, um, we have a juice place here called Boost Juice. It's like meant to be like a healthy boost place. It's far from healthy, but um, they, they, that's how they try to make it sound. They did a Vegemite smoothie once that had bananas and stuff and Vegemite and that was that was definitely the weirdest one. Is meat pies big over there? I don't know. I know you guys over there are into your dessert pies, like cherry pies and things like that, um, which I can't say is really big down here. I guess apple pie is kind of big. Is this all I'm supposed to be doing? Am I supposed to just be eating in this video? So for those who don't know what Vegemite is, let's go through the ingredients. So Vegemite is yeast extracts from yeast grown on barley and wheat salt mineral salt yeah malt extract from barley color flavors so it's essentially it's yeast extract basically just a real salty a lot of people say bitter to me i don't think it tastes bitter i think it tastes salty but at the same time i feel like really bitter things can sort of taste salty too i just had a thought sharon this might be the first time in the history of the world that someone has spread Vegemite on the top of a pie. And if it is, you'll only see it on the Life With Two YouTubers YouTube channel. Vegemite on toast is the most common thing to have Vegemite on. You spread butter on your toast and you're only really supposed to use just a little bit of Vegemite. Lightly spread, but... I love it and I go hack. How much more Aussie can I get, right? My plate's a bit dirty. My mum always told me, the way you leave your plate after you eat, is the way your wife's gonna look. So if you um, if you have a clean plate, then your wife's gonna be beautiful. If um, you have a messy plate after you eat, then your wife's not gonna be so attractive, so. <laughs> anyway, that was my pie and pie now and I'm, um, I'm gonna enjoy some, uh, Vegemite shapes uh, to wash the taste of Vegemite out of my mouth. Keep it simple. Hey, so I'm in the kitchen. I'm gonna do some cooking. <laughs> well, after a fashion. Um, so I'll talk about English food, of course, fish and chips. Fish and chips are a staple. Um, I can't bother to go to the fish and chip shop though. I don't wanna get corona while I'm out there shopping. <laughs> uh, jelly deals, I talked about jelly deals, but that's more so my dad eats, I'm not really interested in him. It's just basically fish in jelly. It's really weird. Um, I could have mentioned this. 
Marmite. Have you heard of Marmite? Basically, um, some people love it, some people hate it, and the actual Marmite company make a good make a, a, a thing out of it. So they will say you either love it or hate it, and it's all that's what their, their, their campaign for their ads is mostly featured around that. And they're so much so that the fact that the, the, the phrase something being Marmite means it's something that someone either loves or hates, and there's no middle ground. It's like you love it or hate it. That's known as a, a Marmite situation. <laughs> right, got some beans. Gonna make some beans on toast. Not of these though, this is the original ones. This is the Heinz, this is the ones. Oh, I did know when they actually first came into this country at one point. I know there was a, there was a Fortman Mason's department store brought them into the UK in like 1869 or something like that. I can't remember now, I used to know it. <laughs> um, I'm gonna make some beans on toast. Cause I use a little, I use a little can of beans. And there you have it, beans on toast. Toast with toasted bread, can be brown bread, can be white bread. Uh, beans, there's various different kinds of beans. This is just the standard uh, baked beans. You can get chili beans and beans with little sausages and stuff like that. I could have put some marmite on there as well to give it a little bit more, but I couldn't, because I was trying to do, <laughs> I, was holding, I was trying to hold the camera underneath my arm while uh, <laughs> it was spreading and it wasn't working. Right, tea, I've got to have tea. Much more tea drinkers here than we are coffee drinkers, and uh, with good reason because tea tastes nice and coffee tastes whatever. <laughs> no, nah, coffee's alright. But uh, you may have spotted something. I put my milk in before the water. I am. Um, oh, it's terrible. No, people don't like that in England. If you put it, you've got to put the milk in last. I always put it in first because I'm a contrary kind of person, and uh, why be normal? And there you go. Simple, lovely, a staple of uh, a British person's breakfast, lunch, mainly probably the working classes. I don't imagine there's too many posh people who have beans on toast, although it's not unheard of. And um, from a little kid, you learn the beans on toast song or the bean song. It's beans, beans, good for the heart. The more you eat, the more you fart. The more you fart, the better you feel. So eat baked beans for every meal. That's what we used to say in our house anyway, when we were kids. <laughs> I dare say there's variants of that rhyme, possibly all around the world, I don't know. Wherever they eat build beans on toast, or beans, I'm sure they have uh, variations on that, on that great old poem. <laughs> anyway, I'm out of here. Cheers for watching. Baked beans were originally sold in the UK by Fortnum and Mason in 1901 as a luxury item. A large can would cost 9D, the equivalent of £2.15 by today's prices. The first can of British manufactured Heinz beans was created in the Heinz factory in Harleston in 1928. Baked beans provide fibre and plant-based protein. They're also a good source of thiamine, zinc and selenium, which support energy production, immune function and thyroid health. 80% of UK families eat baked beans once a week and 91% of all baked beans sold are consumed on toast.